We as women hear a lot about getting regular mammograms, but now actor Olivia Munn's breast cancer battle is raising awareness about another tool that can help determine the pro probability of getting the disease. Munn says she would not have found her cancer for another year if her doctor had not decided to calculate her breast cancer risk assessment score. Now, it's based on a woman's family history, the results of a prior breast biopsy, age at first period, and the age when a woman has her first child. Join me now live is Dr. Laura Esserman, a surgeon and breast cancer oncology specialist at UCSF. Dr. Esserman, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, Olivia Munn took what's called the Gale model, which is a breast cancer risk assessment tool, and she credits that for helping her catch her cancer early. But you and your team have developed a similar study at UCSF. Can you tell us a little bit about that? We can. And so, you know, the Gale model uh, really was developed from a study in, in the 80s and actually has been available on a website for decades. It's just not used and put into practice. We are, are running, and my team are running the wisdom study, Women Informed to Screen Depending on Measures of Risk, because we're trying to do a better job of thinking about how to approach breast cancer. We've been doing it the same way for many years, and we haven't made as much of a dent as we would like to. And so the whole idea here is that, you know, there are lots of different kinds of breast cancer. Women have different kinds of risk factors. So why are we screening everybody as if one size fits all? And what we're trying to do now with wisdom, what we call wisdom 2.0 is try and figure out who's at risk for faster growing cancers, who's at risk for slower growing cancers, and how can we figure that out and use that risk assessment to determine uh, how often you should be screened, but more importantly, what you can also be doing for prevention. So if you're at risk for and have dense, if you're at risk for a faster growing tumor and you have dense breast tissue, a tool like an MRI may be the better way to screen. If you're really at low risk, you don't need to come back for a while. And we need to be putting into place all the tools that we already know, like all of the factors, the genetic factors, like do you have an inherited predisposition to breast cancer? Not too common, 2% of the population, but if you have it, your risk is much higher. Mm -hmm. And we're looking for other things like polygenic risk, many genes that you can inherit that together could help us understand even more than tools like the Gale model or the breast cancer uh, consortium model, how better to figure out what your risk is and what we can do to reduce that risk. Yeah, this really follows kind of this trend of more personalized medicine, but would anyone exactly. have access to the wisdom study? Does it matter what kind of insurance you have or even where does you not, live? Does not. The wisdom study is open to all women not had breast cancer now at age 30 or above, because we can assess your genetic risk factors at any time. And so the time to know is like at 30 or onward. So anyone can go to wisdomstudy.org and sign up. We're trying to recruit another 50,000 women so that we can really make a transformative difference in how we approach breast cancer screening. Just as Olivia Munn's case showed, there is more information to be had. And those people who are at the highest risk need a different approach than the people who are at the lowest risk or the middle risk. That's what we can help do. And that's what together, if everyone participates, we can generate the kind of data that will really make the future better for everyone. I can attest, I signed up for the wisdom study this afternoon. It was very easy, it took about 20 minutes. But I'm curious, you know, Olivia Munn, opted for a double mastectomy. That seems so extreme considering all the treatment options out there for breast cancer. How do you determine how aggressive to go with treatment? Are you seeing this in your practice that women opting to get a double mastectomy if they're at high risk? Well, I think it really depends what kind of risk you have, you know, and then you can't generalize. You know, if you are, if you've inherited a risk factor like BRCA1, you know, when you have an 85% risk of getting a breast cancer or, or getting a 50% chance of getting a second breast cancer and a third, you know, that may be the appropriate thing to do. Or if it's, you know, diffuse disease or there are other things, yes, it can be appropriate. But I would say in general, a lot of the work that I've been doing over the last decade or two is really starting with treatments first, mm -hmm. depending on the stage of the disease, but for stage two and three breast cancer, or even in situ cancer, what can we do first? 
and look at response to treatment so that we understand what's working. Because a woman's life is threatened really by the risk that a breast cancer can spread. There are some cancers that are very low risk and don't have the risk of spreading. Surgery alone is a good strategy for that. But for the people who have more aggressive cancers, you really need to understand you know, what your response to therapy is. And we've done, we have tools to do so much better in targeting therapies. That's what the iSpy trial is all about. And, you know, people should look at some of the new and exciting trials we have to really try and improve the way we approach breast cancer. It's not an emergency to do something the next day. It's so important to take a step back, understand the biology, understand your options, look at clinical trials and decide what's right for you. You have the time to sort that out. And so all these things are, are important. And yes, indeed, there are many, many more drug combinations and tools that we have to reduce risk. And everybody should know what their options are yeah. and what their risk status is. Yeah, such important information. Dr. Laura Esserman with UCSF, thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thanks for having me. Anytime. <laughs>